thrill me. This show is part of the Thrill Me Podcast Network. Experience more on Facebook and YouTube. An ale for me. And for my officers. Welcome to Tin Ford. Grab a chair, sit down, grab your favorite Sintha Hall, and we will talk about the next generation of Star Trek. That's right, we have our athletic brewing. Oh, oh, oh. So good, Trailblazer, that's what we got right now. Uh, on this episode, we will be discussing Season 1, Episode 5, I believe, The Last Outpost for Star Trek The Next Generation and at the end of the episode because Star Trek is very much in the atmosphere currently the first episode of season five of Star Trek Discovery dropped so I'm going to give my thoughts on that episode and I think once a week I will be diving in and giving my thoughts on the season and overall we'll get into that in a bit let's get into the show that you came to see star trek the next generation the last outpost now this is the quick synopsis of this episode the enterprise makes a confrontational first contact with the ferengi race as their two ships are estranged by a presumed dead planet ready to judge them. You will be judged. Welcome to the judgment. Take that picture down. Get judged. Um, yeah, so that's the basic plot of this episode. And honestly, for me in this one, it is straight up an okay episode. I think this was the first time I was like, this is one of those TNG episodes that just are basic. Yes, we do get introduced to a villainous species that we will come to love. And some of the actors uh, as the Ferengi show up in other things. And I think it's kind of wonderful because this episode is straight up a test for a certain actor to come back as a Ferengi. Um, we begin with the episode encountering uh, the Ferengi ship and like it gets shot upon, but nothing's happening. Then their ship is like, uh, the, not their ship, like the Enterprise is stranded, like they can't do anything. The planet somehow causing all this, causing these ships not being able to move and like both the Enterprise and the Ferengi are like, we're going to surrender to you well, so like, why did you do this to our ship? And they did not. They figure out, out it's the planet. The planet is a dead planet uh, run by this godlike empire, the empire. And this was an outpost, hence the last outpost being the title of the episode. Um, and so eventually the Ferengi and the crew of the Enterprise are going to go down to the planet and try to work together to figure some stuff out. Let's get into the Ferengi. This is the first time that we get to see this, this race, this very woofy looking uh, culture of a people, a planet, if you will. And what's great about them from the fucking jump is how disgusted they are of humans. Like, they come out, they're like, oh my God, I forgot how ugly you are. Like, the first time they look, oh, you guys, they weren't kidding. Space wasn't kidding. These guys are space dogs. And then, you know, while they're having their conversation, then when Picard wants to contact them again and be like, hey, we should go down to this planet when he comes on the viewer screen, the Ferengi's like, God damn, put a bag on the face because I ain't trying to see it. Y'all motherfuckers are dogs. And I find that so hilarious. I love 
when an alien species will dog the human race. And I mean go hard into the paint, because why wouldn't they? And throughout this episode, you exactly see what these guys are. They're conniving, they're tricksters, they don't want to play well, they don't want to be good guys. They just want to grab some shit, sell it to people, kill them while they sell, and then make out with the money that they were going to give them. And they also get the item they want, how you doing? That's basically the Ferengi moving forward into the series. And they play it quite well in this because when the away team comes down there um, with Riker leading it, the they get attacked by the Ferengi. And then when this god portal comes down and he's like, I'm going to judge you mother suckers. Oh, you will be judged. Um, the Ferengi are like, they did it. They brought you back. They did the thing. And I'm jumping, I'm jumping to the end. So let's just... Let's go back a little bit to some of the moments on the ship that were fun. So I've told you about the Ferengi that are goddamn lunatics. Um, Riker comes up with an idea of maybe how they can break free, get out of here and stuff like that. And Jordy's in engineering. And this is the wildest, like, I get being excited. This is one of those moments. I was just like, whoa, this was a choice. This was a choice to get that excited. But like at one point, he literally is like, yeah, if we do this, if we connect the vector to the the Como Blast and then woohoo, woohoo, we'll fucking go. And I'm like, dial it back a little bit. I'm glad that you guys figured it out. I'm glad, spoiler alert for the future, Jordy gets his rocks off being in engineering because this is where he's going to end up. So I'm glad all this is going down. But at the same bit, Jordy, let's just calm it down a little. Let's bring it back a touch. Also during this, Data, once again, trying to find humanity's reasons, trying to figure out what makes a human tick. He's trying to get humor. He's saying some jokes and stuff. But he also finds this Chinese finger trap and he gets his finger trapped and he doesn't know how to do anything, like get it out or whatever. So, you know, humans, doing what humans do, they show him how to do it. And uh, they get his fingers out, stuff like that. Stuff like that was good. Really, no Wesley Crusher this episode. Tasha Yar didn't fall in love with someone and try to get that booty rock. Nothing like that this episode. It was just straight up a standard TNG episode. I think actually the most uh, thing about it is like Worf was ready to throw down with whoever. Like, our ship can't move. Fucking fight them. Uh, the planet just shot nothing at us. Let's fucking fight them. Let's go down there and fight. Worf was hard rock ready to fight anybody, which eventually someone's going to become a security guard. And I, I think we figured out why. Um... But we go to the end, and at the end, I'm noticing when they're talking to the Ferengi, there's one that looks familiar. I'm like, God dang, I, I'm pretty sure this guy has been a Ferengi later on in the series. And I was correct, because Latek is played by Armin uh, Shermanman. Shermanman? That's a name, right? Sherman. Sher Sherman. So it's played by this actor, Armin, and Armin plays Quark later on in TNG slash um, Deep Space Nine. And he is so good at playing this Ferengi, like so much so they made him a different Ferengi that they want to be a main cast member in a different Star Trek show. And he's not even the only person. That's the thing about Star Trek that I love, especially because, you know, alien race, you gotta put all that makeup on, you can do whatever you want. Even Portal in this plays one of the villains in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. And I'm like, I love when, the, and it happens all the time, so many times do actors play multiple roles in Star Trek? I mean, in fucking Star Trek 5 and 6, uh, there's an actor in both of those. Um, so, when they're on the planet, Portal arrives. Portal arrives very godlike, very like, ooh, you mother suckers, you woke me up, and I got this sweet spear trident. I'm gonna rock your world. And he comes out to Riker, and Riker's just being like, yo, man, I'm chill, okay? I'm not here to fight the fight. That's not, look, I hear 
that you just woke up, you took a very long nap, your empire gone, okay? But we chill, we're about peace. We're about spreading love across the galaxy. And Portal's like, I like this. I'm gonna let you live. What should I do to these little fucking gnarly guys who obviously got some problems because the Ferengi keep coming up being like, oh, they stole our idea. That's what I was going to do. Look, we great people. You go tell Zahn. You remember Zahn at Farpoint? That motherfucker will vouch for us. But nobody's going to vouch for these Ferengi because these guys are nasty. Um, so, so Riker walks with Portal and he's like, look, eh, you should let him go because... I don't want to cause a war. No one's ever seen these little mother suckers ever before in life. So let's be chill with them. We'll see what happens going forward. So Porter lets them go. They don't they don't cause no harm, no fuss, no muss, and they go on their way. And you can tell this is like a start of the Ferengi that are going to be they're going to be coming around more often they they alluded to them before they they've made this big deal that no one's seen them they obviously got technology so the Ferengi are going to play a big part of Star Trek the next generation um this episode is fine I'm good with it. I think it's very very too close to do a godlike creature that is going to judge them so soon since Q in the first episode. Other than that, it was a fine episode. I had a good time watching it, especially the Ferengi just dogging humanity about their looks. Like, I need more of that. I need more of the Ferengi dogging these mother suckers from here on out. But that is Star Trek The Last Outpost. And now I think we should move on to our next subject. All right, so unlike with Star Trek, the next generation shows that how I talk about it, I'm not really going to spoil things about this. I'll give my like overall season review later on stuff, maybe spoil stuff then, but I'm just going to give the basic plot that IMDB is showing and then just giving my thoughts on the whole episode uh, from there. But so. This is Season 5, Episode 1, The Red Directive. Captain Burnham and the USS Discovery are sent to retrieve a mysterious artifact hidden inside an 800-year-old Romulan vessel, but find that they are not the only ones on the hunt. Meanwhile, Saru is offered a position of a lifetime and he is, and I, I, okay, to get Saru stuff out of the way, I think the idea is to, you know, send this crew on its way. Send the crew to, you know, everybody's going to have their own life after this. I mean, the thing about Discovery, if you've never seen Discovery before, there's a certain plot point about this where they're not at home. Very Voyager-like where they are out where their home is not. And I think they have to like deal with this fact that they have to make a home. And I think Saru is way okay with where he is in making that life. Um, the episode began kind of weird because I, it just, it pumps you into the action, which I'm fine with. I love that idea of just like, how did we get here? Which is where the episode goes from there. It goes four hours earlier and you start getting with the, the crew of Discovery trying to figure out what they're doing. And, um, there's some gnarly things that are going on. Like I know Star Trek's in the future, but there is, and ugh, fuck, I guess that's a spoiler. Okay. So Discovery is in the future, like, you know, during Kirk era almost, so I guess technically when it starts, and then eventually just bam, fast forwards into the fucking future, like season four and five, uh, three, four, five. So um, the technology is an even more advanced thing from that time. And I dig that because we are very fast paced with technology. And like, if we keep playing in eras that are kind of getting more improved now, you know, like in the 60s, they had communicators. Well, we have communicators now that are kind of probably better or as good. So we need to figure out how we can do more advancements. And I think Discovery does a really good job of keeping with that advancement. And like the story says in this, 
they, they are looking for a 800 year old Romulan thing out there so much so that it ties back into a TNG episode. I love that. And I, I don't give a fuck if that is a minor spoiler, but it is, it is a cool, like, Oh man, we're, we're connecting some stuff, especially with people that we don't get to see play with each other. So that was kind of cool. Um, and the idea of the MacGuffin that they're going for, I think is a great idea. And I remember reading a um, interview with the showrunners being like, we're trying to create a Indiana Jones-esque season with this MacGuffin and I'm about it. And I think that's fun. I love this cast. I kind of forgot that I love the cast. Like I love the engineer, the doctor, their relationship, the even the the kid learning from them from a species from DS9. That's pretty rad. Uh, Burnham, I love. I think Burnham's such a fun captain. I love that it. she's youngish and she's just daring. She's She's got some cool action, act, uh, action uh, set pieces that happen during this that are fantastic. And the, the finale of this episode is pretty bitchin'. Like the way they use their ships to kind of stop a problem that's approaching. Um, like I said, I think this cast is great. I think Book was a great addition seasons earlier, and I'm glad he got to come into this one. Hopefully he's in the rest of the season. But yeah, I just, I absolutely had a ball with this, and I'm ready to go for the final nine episodes that they got. I think it should be a pretty good season. I was talking to my friend earlier today of how much I really loved how discovery began with the first two seasons and it sucks that like the fan base of star trek sometimes just doesn't realize what they have something different than every other star trek they've had basically i think this you know incarnation of what we're getting with paramount plus and their shows are so different that it was kind of welcoming the way they did discovery seasons one and two and the you know the fact that they've kind of backpedaled out of that does make the show less not desirable i don't want to say that but like it was it was banging on all fronts and now i'm just at that like yeah i'm watching because i like the cast um where you look at something like strange new worlds it is set up to be, hey, you like that 60s Star Trek? Well, here it is. Here's 60s Star Trek. Isn't it fun? Where Discovery was taking some dark tone stuff. So much so, it's created a spinoff movie with Section 31 coming out. And I'm super bam ready for that one as well. But uh, I digress in the sense of this episode. I think this episode's a good one. I think it was a fine uh, premiere with some good action set piece. The act, the, the actors are amazing, and I enjoy it. I enjoy everything. I enjoy this Star Trek world we're doing. But I'm telling you what, right now, if the Ferengi would have saw Captain Burnham, they'd been like, "You, oh my God, what are we doing? Get her out of here! Get her out of here!" Anyways, that's this week's Ten Ford. I'm Zach. That's no Brooke. No Brooks here. But you're always welcome to Tim Ford. Get some Cynthia Hall. Sent the whole. I'm not even telling you that I had to like redo this episode, but I did. I fucked up sent the whole at the beginning, and we need to know about it. We need to know about Athletic Brewing. They need to be a sponsor of the show. Make this happen. Write to your local Athletic Brewing uh, congressman and tell them you should sponsor Tim Ford because that's that guy. He likes your stuff. Mm -hmm.